In this video, I'm going to be making our office coffee maker smart by building a coffee alert system that sends notifications when someone brews a fresh pot of coffee. To do this, I'm going to need to continuously monitor the temperature of the coffee machine. I went with the DS18B20 waterproof temperature sensor and a Raspberry Pi 0W. Links for both of these things are in the description. I picked up a small metal outlet box from the local home improvement store and started test fitting the components in it. I covered the back of the pie in electrical tape so that the contacts on the back wouldn't short out on the metal box. I then attached the pie to one side of the box with carpet tape. I wanted to be able to take this apart quickly and change or add things like other sensors. So I decided to use a mini breadboard for the connections. This was super easy to install because the board came with an adhesive backing that easily attached to the other side of the box. After I got the components in the box, I wired up the temperature sensor. There's a link for its simple wiring diagram in the description. I took this rough setup with me the next day and hooked it up to the coffee machine with some metal heat tape. Isn't she a 1990s beauty? It's still going strong. <laughs> I wrote some quick node code that logged the temperature readings to a database while a pot was brewing. We'll go over the code I used in this project in a little bit, so don't worry about that part right now. I also logged the machine's idle temperatures overnight to see how hot it gets when it's not brewing. I imported these readings into Excel and sorted the overnight idle temperatures from highest to lowest. If we jump over to the brewing temps, we can see that right after the coffee is brewed, it reaches 94 degrees Fahrenheit. And if we scroll down, we see that it gets down to around 91 degrees in about 20 minutes. I decided to use these two data points to trigger the alerts. Next, I created a graphic for the front of the box. I have a friend with a vinyl cutter who was gracious enough to bring this design into the real world for me. And uh, I think it looks pretty awesome. Thanks, Aaron. To make the box match the front, I painted it red. And I must say, they look pretty awesome together. I needed to make the temperature probe connect to the breadboard without falling out, so I soldered some jumper wires onto its leads. There wasn't quite enough room in the box to plug the pie up via USB, so I also soldered the positive and negative leads from a USB cable I cut the end off of to the terminals on the Raspberry Pi. Then I wired it back up. The LED will come on when the code is running and blink when coffee is being brewed. There's a link to the entire wiring diagram in the description. Now, let's take a look at the code. It's written in Node and it's pretty simple. This project is up on GitHub, so you can grab it and tear it apart, change things, make it better. That would be great. It imports the standard FS library that allows us to interact with the file system. It imports exec so that I can run terminal commands from Node and it imports the fetch utility, which allows me to interact with REST APIs. It also imports the Pi GPIO library so that uh, we can control the GPIO pins on the Pi. Just below that, we have some constants that you should be able to change if you want to get this code working for you. First, we have the brew temp, which I have changed a little bit from that Excel document. I needed to vary these numbers just a little bit because I changed the placement of the probe slightly on the coffee machine. So the brewing temp I set to 88 degrees, the brew temp I set to 93 degrees, and the brew offset I set to 45 minutes. So this takes 45 minutes and turns it into milliseconds. We don't usually brew coffee back to back, so this gave it a nice amount of time to cool down and allowed me to send accurate notifications. Next we have the file path, which is the file path for the temperature file. So this is where the temperature probe logs its information back to. Yours will be slightly different because your serial number for your one wire temperature probe will be different than mine. Adafruit has a pretty good tutorial on uh, setting up this temperature sensor, so I'll leave a link to that in the description. Next we have a Slack message that I want to send. So it sends with the username of CoffeeBot, and it sends the text, there's fresh coffee, get it while it's good. 
and the next thing that I have is the Slack hook. I'm not going to show the Slack hook here, but uh, you can go create one in Slack and post it right in here, and it will post to the channel that you choose. You could obviously not use Slack and use something else. You could have it use uh, Twilio to send a text message, or you could just send an email, whatever you wanted to do. Next, we set up the LED by using the PyGPIO library to make pin 21 an output pin. Then we set up a read file function, which basically turns the fs.read file uh, function into a promise. Then we create a function that gets the temperature from the file. This basically takes what this function has returned and slices it up so that we get the temperature back in Celsius. Then we have a two Fahrenheit function, which takes the Celsius temperature and converts it to Fahrenheit. Then we have the is the coffee ready function, which takes in a temperature, and I'm actually not using this uh, period here. So basically it takes in the temperature, and if the temperature is greater than the brew temp that we set, it returns true. If the temperature is greater than the brewing temp, it returns almost, and if neither one of those are true, it returns false. Now we have an object down here that sets some state, which are the things that get changed. We have the last brewed temp. Uh, by default, that's zero. We have the LED, and this indicates whether the LED is on or off. By default, that is set to one, and then we have blink, which will hold the interval that makes the LED blink. Down here is where the code actually starts executing, so I'm gonna jump to the bottom of this code and take a look here at line 101. So as soon as the Raspberry Pi boots up and this file runs, it runs this exec command, which sets up the temperature probe. Once that's done, it goes ahead and sets the LED to its default state, which is on. Then it starts this interval function, which if we go up here, we can see that interval returns a set interval which fires every 10 seconds. So if the state dot last brood plus the brew offset is less than or equal to the current date, and this is all in milliseconds, then we want to run this stuff down here. If we are in that brew offset period, which is that 45 minute time span, we're gonna go ahead and console log out just brood. I think I'll wait a little bit. So if we're, if we're not in that time span, and then what we want to do is read from the file, then take the file, run it through the 2 Fahrenheit, set that to the constant of temp, then we want to take that temp and run it through the isCoffeeReady function and return whether the coffee is ready or not, or whether it's brewing. If the coffee is ready, then what we're going to do is clear the uh, blink state interval and we are going to also set that blink state back to null and then set the last brew time to the current date and time in milliseconds. Then we're going to set the state of the LED to one and actually initiate that by writing it out through PyGPIO. Then we're gonna run the fetch command, which is gonna fire our Slack hook, pass in our Slack message. Then we're gonna console log out that it's ready and what the temperature is. If the coffee ready function has returned almost, then we know that the coffee is brewing. We will console log out almost and the temperature. If the state.blink is not currently blinking, so if it's null, then we'll go ahead and set that up as an interval. This will make the LED blink every 800 milliseconds. And if neither one of those things are true, so if coffee ready returns false, then we will console log not brewing and the temperature of the pot. Here I'm using the uh, PM2 program to start the code up as a service when uh, the Raspberry Pi boots, so that uh, as soon as we power it on, the code starts up and uh, we start monitoring the temperature of the coffee machine. I needed a cool way to display this setup by the coffee machine. So I picked up some half inch steel pipe and fittings and gave them a coat of paint to match the box. Now the wires can run nicely through the pipe and out this T-fitting. Please excuse the paint run, uh, I got into a bit of a hurry. If we take a look at the internal wiring, 
we can see that it could be cleaned up quite a bit. A lot of this mess in the box is due to the use of the breadboard. You may have noticed that the second time I put the pie into the box, I flipped it around. This caused me to uh, accidentally put the jumper wires on the wrong pins. Uh, that was confusing for a little while while trying to get this working. Uh, then I realized that um, I was a moron and I switched the wires to the right pins. Another thing I added here was a zip tie to stop the power cable's solder points from getting yanked. Alright, with everything together, let's take it to the office and see how it works. Coffee's brewing, the light starts blinking, and uh, a few seconds after the coffee is done, we get a Slack notification. Awesome! Sweet! It works! I'm really happy with this project and the way it turned out, and all the coffee drinkers in the office are really loving it too. There's so much more that could be done with this project. Uh, one of the ideas that I had was to add a camera to the Raspberry Pi so that uh, when you type a slash command into Slack, like slash is there coffee, uh, it would take a picture and post that picture back into the Slack channel. You could add a second temperature probe to see if somebody had left the burner on on the coffee pot, all kinds of different things. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, there are links in the description for the parts I used as well as the code. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe, all that good stuff. Also, feel free to check out my other videos. Have a great one.